Thank you. I'm really pumped to be here. And um, I have a, we didn't have a PowerPoint, so um, you get to see my awesome art skills. Uh, I think I'll stick to my regular job. <laughs> so um, this is Marissa. She's one of our awesome volunteers. So like Stacy said, I am the Charlotte Director of the Humane League, which is an international farm animal protection organization. And today I'm here to talk to you about effective advocacy and how every one of us can do our best for animals. And like Rowdy said, um, one of the best things we can all do is unify ourselves, right? We're all in this together, so being kind to each other and being kind to others is kind of the basic principle that we like to follow. So, um, as we all know, animals suffer in many ways, like we saw today. Fur, hunting, um, you know, animal agriculture with billions of animals. And so it's very important for all of us to be as effective as we possibly can to end this suffering. The Humane League's mission is to create change at all levels, meal by meal, person by person, community by community. And we do that through grassroots outreach and then um, corporate outreach with institutional corporate campaigns. We get um, major uh, dining service providers and companies like Walmart and you know um, we're currently working on Publix to get them to go cage free to make lives better for animals. Um, why and then that is why Animal Charity Evaluators has said that for every dollar we spend we spare about 13.4 animals. Which is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why should we focus on efficacy and results? Well first of all we have a limited amount of time on this earth all of us. And we all really care about this mission, so we should be focused on the most effective things we can possibly do. So, and we have to think about what we're up against. We're up against giant corporations that have tons of money to spend on marketing and advertising to people to try to sell their product. So, we try to work towards the best possible methods and we follow their approach. So, I have three tips for you from the Humane League's approach to effective advocacy. First, is hang out with mediators. Hang out from pe with people who are different than you. Second, be friendly and optimistic. And then third, um, make a reasonable request. <laughs> we actually have a lot more tips, but I only put a few here. So, first of all, uh, we have to maintain relationships and friendships with people who are different from us. People who eat meat. The reason is, we have the opportunity to affect people that way. If we only hang out with people like us who are vegetarian and vegan, we won't have the opportunity to positively, positively affect others. Um, I, I can't tell you how many vegetarians and vegans I've met who have said, it's just too hard, I can't do it. But we really have to think about animals here and what's the best thing for them. And that is for us to hang out and influence people who are different than us. And that brings me to my next point. Be friendly and maintain relationships with others. So, um, what's that? The smiley face, that's good. <laughs> I'm not a good artist, I apologize. So, we're salespeople for the movement here, right? So, it's very positive, it's a very um, important that we remain positive and friendly to others about our issues. I know that the suffering is great and it's very hard, but it's a very important thing that we are um, not, uh, you know, self-righteous, argumentative, and um, extreme because that's how the world sees vegans um, a lot of times, unfortunately. And so it's very important that we kind of combat that and be the opposite. And we always have to be thinking, what is in the best interest of animals? That's the thing that I try to do the most um, in my advocacy. Uh, you know, out of the public. Uh, it can be hard to recommend, you know, meatless Mondays just one day a week, but if that gets someone started on the path, then that's in the best interest of animals. So um, I have a great example of this. We leaflet the work tour every year and um, hand out like thousands and thousands of leaflets. Yeah, hopefully I'll see you all there. And um, I was picking up leaflets on the ground and I was getting kind of upset because you know, I had a guy come up and like put the leaflet in his mouth, like he put the whole thing in his mouth and then spit it at me. And he was like, that's vegan, right? <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, it is, that's right. <laughs> and I was friendly to him. And then the guy behind him came up and said, you know, I wasn't going to take one of those, but I think I will. I can't believe that you were so nice to that guy. And it really makes me want to listen to what you have to say. And that was the kind of experience, those things happen all the time. So uh, that's definitely a reason that I think we should start with that.
Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> Martin Luther King has a great quote on um, optimism and friendliness. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So I think that's a good reason that you know, he's a, obviously a great advocate for all types of issues. Um, but that's a good explanation. So um, we have a couple things to be optimistic about. This is a movement that's really growing. So who here has eaten or has in their fridge some meat alternatives? Meat alternatives like tofu or tempeh. Yeah, great. So meat alternatives are growing at a rate of 50% year over year in the food service sector. That is huge. And they're growing at a rate of about 35% uh, year over year in the restaurant sector alone. So I mean, this is, I mean, sorry, excuse me, the grocery sector. So this is huge numbers. It's also, we found that Americans eat about 10% less meat than they did just a few years ago. And this is not vegetarians and vegans. This is people who are cutting back on meat. Just to give you a number uh, for the scale of that, we used to eat 10 billion animals, now we only eat 9 billion. That's a whole billion animals that aren't being killed. That's pretty darn good. And this brings me to my last and final tactic for you. Make reasonable requests of people. Like I said earlier, it can be really hard to say to somebody to try meatless Mondays. Um, or there's also a program called Eat Vegan Before Six. But think about how many meals that they're not eating animals if they do this. Uh, if they ate vegan before six, that would be 14 meals that they would be, if, considering that they ate three meals a day, that'd be 14 meals where they're cutting back on meat. It allows people the opportunity to learn recipes, learn how to incorporate these meals into their everyday eating plans, which may be too hard for them if you just told them to go straight vegan right away. So that is why we definitely have to advocate for that. It's advocating for a core psychological concept. The, the, uh, the co concept of getting your foot in the door. We just gotta get our foot in the door and be positive with our messaging, and this is the way to create real change. One vegetarian spares about 37 animals from a lifetime of suffering. That equates to about 25 land animals and 12 finfish per year. But if you got nine people to go vegetarian or vegan, you would be sparing 370 animals. That's why it's important that we have really effective results here. We need to be inclusive rather than exclusive um, and put our concerns about purity and labels aside, even though it can be hard. Uh, if we have the purity and labels, it becomes very hard for other people that maybe can't identify with us. By simply engaging in effective activism, we create a ripple effect. I think, is that the ripple effect? Yeah. See my ripple effect here? <laughs> And so that's what we've got to do with this movement. Create a ripple effect and affect everyone in this world. And we're at the tipping point, folks. We're almost there. So I have one great quote to leave you with from Gandhi. First they ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight you, and then you win. And we're close to winning, guys. Thank you.